I am an introvert. I've been this way my entire life. Large group gatherings, not really my thing. Having conversations, I'm more of a listener. And being stuck at home for the past year, really can't say that I hated it that much. As an introvert, I thrive when I'm given my own personal space. It's a place where I can be calm and navigate through the mess of ideas in my head. So why would someone like me choose to practice a genre of photography that is all about being bold and taking risks? Honestly, I can't tell you why. I've just always had this strong craving to make street photos. And I guess I'm willing to step out of my comfort zone every once in a while to do that. Street photography is an activity made for extroverts. There's no doubt about it. In many people's minds, a street photographer is an outgoing, confident, and loud individual. They enjoy the crowds, they like making connections with people, and if they get in trouble, they usually have a way to talk themselves out of any situation. But that's not to say that there isn't a lane in street photography for people who are like me. As difficult as it may seem, through many years of practice, I think I've developed a good system that works for me. And if you're anything like me, then the following things I'm going to share might just help you out a little. What if I told you as an introvert that you already have one of the most important natural abilities to excel as a street photographer? You've been practicing this subconsciously your entire life and you don't even know it. You are a very observant individual. In a group setting, you're that person who prefers to listen instead of talk. You observe and analyze everything that's being said and what people are doing. Sound familiar? Now all you have to do is apply that strength into street photography and practice it all the time. Something that I like to do to practice my observation skills is actually to leave the camera behind at home and walk around the city. I watch people, I observe their behavior, and I'll even try to predict the interactions they have with each other and their surroundings. By taking away the need to make photos, you're relieving yourself of that pressure to deliver. This will allow your mind to focus solely on spotting moments that are worthy of capturing. You'll get less caught up with what's directly in front of you, and you'll start looking a bit further to spot potential subjects and points of interest. Being a good street photographer is all about being good at observing, and that means that you already have a very good head start. Having a good idea of who you are as a person 
also goes a long way in determining what type of street photographer you are. I spend a ton of time self-reflecting about photography and life in general. With photography, I'll break apart all the small details of my own work. Not so much the technical aspect of it, but more on how I'm feeling about it. This step might seem unimportant to many people, but having this clarity about myself has helped me shape my entire creative process when it comes to making photos and even these videos. I know for a fact that I'm not that guy who will stick a camera in someone's face and blast them with a the flash. I also don't enjoy having conversations with strangers, so street portraits might not be my thing. And though I do like to get up close from time to time, I prefer to do it in a more subtle manner. I am a quiet observer on the streets, and I try my best to be invisible when I'm out shooting. You know when people tell you that you need to step out of your comfort zone to get better shots? I say ignore them. Because as an introvert who's doing street photography, you're already way out of your comfort zone. When you're out shooting, you need to be clear of who you are, be as comfortable as you can be, and that'll make it much easier for you to perform at your best. Street photography is all about self-expression. If successful, your photos will give your viewers a glimpse of who you are as a person. And if you're forcing yourself to be someone that you're not, you're just hiding what makes you unique. A question that people always ask me is how I deal with confrontations on the streets. And to be completely honest, it really doesn't happen to me that often. As a person who is overly cautious about many things in life, I will always choose to play it safe, even if it means sacrificing a good shot. Nothing gives me more anxiety than having to deal with angry people. That thing I mentioned earlier about being good at observing, it applies here too. You need to have a good judge of character when you're out shooting. There's no way of knowing exactly how a person would react to having the photo taken. But the more you do it, the more you'll be able to pick up on patterns and warning signs. Another really important reminder that I'd like to add is Try to be clear of why you're even photographing someone in the first place. Is it because of the way they're dressed? How they look? Or are they just part of a scene? It's always a good practice to have that explanation ready in your head. On one hand, you're training yourself to be more purposeful with the way you shoot. And on the other, you won't have to scramble for a reason when someone questions you. As a final precaution, I printed a set of these business cards to take with me on shoots. If I do get confronted, I'll explain that I'm a photographer who's working on a project, and I'll give them this card as a reference, to show them that I have nothing to hide and that this is something that I take seriously. The fact is, you will get confronted if you're a street photographer. You have to make sure that you're ready for it. So when it does happen, you'll at least have some kind of plan to get yourself out of it. Sometimes I can get overly focused when I'm out shooting to the point where I lose sense of time and not even notice that my feet are blistered from all the walking. Being able to get into this kind of zone might sound like a good thing, but I've come to realize that it actually isn't.
shooting this way will eventually cause you to burn out. And that's exactly what happened to me a while back. I was so mentally and physically drained that I just didn't feel like making photos anymore. Since experiencing that, I've made some adjustments to the way I shoot. I'm going out a lot less, and I limit my sessions to a maximum of maybe around two hours each time. I'll also take time to relax during a session. I'll take a step back from all the action, find a quiet area, and make photographs of more relaxing things. Being in large crowds stresses me out a lot, so backing off from time to time is a good way for me to recharge. There's also nothing wrong with not shooting at all. There are plenty of things that you can do at home to improve your photography. You can read a book and get inspired, or you can learn about how to make better prints of your photos. Or just sit back, relax, and watch a movie. You can learn a lot from its cinematography. The key here is to listen to your body and come up with a routine that can help you stay fresh and motivated to create. The last piece of advice that I have for introverts like me, be aware of any advice you're given, including the ones I've shared in this video. No one knows you like you do. What works for others might not work for you. Like many things in life, you need to figure this one out for yourself. Just like how I've developed my own system. Photograph things that you're comfortable with, and don't feel obligated to follow the trends of what makes a good street photographer. It's very easy to fall into that trap these days. And if street photography isn't really for you, then there's no point in forcing it. Tap into that vibrant inner world of yours and find something that inspires you to create. There are plenty of other genres to tap into and a whole lot of beautiful subjects out there waiting for you to photograph. Just do your own thing.